number one. Sports analytics is a fast growing industry. Teams are investing heavily in it and UNC Charlotte is a training ground. You guys are on the clock for the Carolina Panthers, okay? Is the pick in? A couple weeks ago, a thousand miles from Kansas City, tonight's NFL draft already played out in John Tobias's sports analytics class. Did you have like a QB draft board? Like UNC Charlotte students like sat in front of their laptops, their team's logo, and crunch the numbers. Just like how scouts and decision makers are when it comes to NFL teams still on the board. They were playing the role of NFL general manager. Pick by pick, they went through the first round of tonight's draft. And with the Panthers up first, we didn't have to wait long to get the call we were wondering about. C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, okay, quarterback Ohio State. The reasons okay. behind their pick in a moment, but first, let's try to understand why data mining number crunchers have become so important in sports. The thing I would say, Jamie, is that the goal for analytics is to give your team a competitive edge based on data. The movement largely started in baseball. The revolution's early days played out on the big screen in the Brad Pitt movie, Moneyball. In order to buy wins, you need to buy runs. And how much has this changed and how quickly? I'll go ahead and put in perspective. When I was a graduate student, um, I interned with the Charlotte Hornets, so this was like 15 years ago. And there, were, there was not an analytical department, it was not an analytical staff. And it was the same for NFL teams, NBA, uh, MLB teams, NHL teams. But now it's to the point to where if you don't have an analytical person or an analytical staff, mm -hmm. you're kind of looked at as like, like a dinosaur. One of the obvious evolutions you've seen of late in football is an increased willingness for coaches to gamble on fourth down. A thousand percent, because now you have a lot of coaches that have analytics people actually on the headset. Not every team, yeah. but when it comes to like situational, you know, like uh, like down in distances, like fourth and two, fourth and three, fourth and four, like what are the odds? Okay, what are the percentages over the last year, the last two years? So when we saw Philadelphia almost always go for it on those fourth and shorts with that same very play. Exactly. That was based on analytics. Yes. So I don't think it's a coincidence that the Philadelphia Eagles probably have the most staff, high or the largest staff for analytics, uh, for the analytics department than any other team. But the question tonight is who to pick? Most everyone thinks it's between Ohio State's C.J. Stroud, who is bigger than Alabama's Bryce Young, who seems to be more accurate. We watch the draft that's coming up. How much of the decisions are going to be based on what they've seen on film or live in games versus what they've seen on the spreadsheet? That's a great question. I, I would say both because, you know, the, the game film and the game tape doesn't lie. You know, but at the same time, when it comes to like, you know, different like analytical metrics, I think that also plays a good part as well. And that is where it gets tricky. Which data point is most important? It'll determine who you take. Bryce Young. Why? What's the analytics that tells you he's the better option here? Yeah. So I would definitely say the accuracy. And then on top of that, you know, he was just as accurate, even more so when he played like high level competition, LSU, Georgia. He was great. So that's why I would go ahead and draft Bryce Young. But it's not what his students think. I just want to ask you all the show of hands if you can. Um, real quick, we saw what the Panthers brain trust here in the room did by taking C.J. Stroud with that number one overall pick. By a show of hands, who agrees if you had the number one pick, you would have taken C.J. Stroud? Most of you. And why did you guys decide that that was the best move for you? You know, one thing uh, that the professor has always told me is the best kind of ability is availability. And with players that uh, are of similar build to Bryce Young, like with um, Kyler Murray, I'm just worried about him getting injured. So we shall see who's right, professor or students. Coming up next.